Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the drive block on your top load washer. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will need to remove the cabinet from the washer. So because we will be working near some electrical circuits, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the washer. Either pull it far enough forward that you can unplug it, or locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker, or remove the appropriate fuse. Once we've done that, we can start the repair. Now that we have our inlet water supply disconnected and our power unplugged, our next step will be to tilt this console back. Now, depending on your model, if you have exposed end caps, you'll need to remove those and there may be a screw hidden behind at an angle down through the front. There may be a screw through the back. If it doesn't have uh, enclosed end caps, you may be able to lift that up by just taking a putty knife and sliding it in along the edge until you meet the resistance of a spring clip. You press the clip, and pull up on the front of that console to release it. We'll do the same on the opposite side. And then just rotate the console over the back. Now next, we'll disconnect the wire harness to the lid switch, lift up on the locking tab, pull the harness away, and then just tuck that up into the back here. Now next, we need to release these two clips that secure the cabinet to the back panel. Simply take a large flat blade screwdriver, go down through the opening towards the front, bottom of the screwdriver out, and then pry against the hook at the front of that clip, and that will release it. The clip looks like this. We're basically putting our screwdriver in and releasing that clip from the main top. Do the same on the opposite side. And then we'll just set those two retaining clips aside. Now next, we'll raise the lid slightly, and then we're just going to tilt that whole cabinet assembly back towards us. Watch that you don't jam your fingers against the tub. Once we've cleared the inlet water flume, pull that cabinet straight back, and remove it from the washer altogether. Now to access that drive block, our next step will be to remove the agitator. If your model uses a fabric softener dispenser, we'll need to pull that off the top of the agitator first. And some models may just have a cap on top of that that you need to remove. Well, next, if we look down inside, you'll see a clear plastic cover. Taking a pair of pliers, we're just going to grasp one end of the tabs on that and pull that up out of there. Just give it a sharp pull and pop that up. You'll want to make sure that the O-ring is still attached to that. If not, pull that out of the opening. And next, we're going to remove a 7 16 bolt that secures that agitator to the agitator shaft. So using an extension with a ratchet. You'll also have to hold on to the base of that agitator to keep that from turning. Once we've loosened that bolt enough, we'll lift the agitator out and just set that aside. Now next, we'll need to remove this retainer spring and the spacer. We'll simply slide that up the agitator shaft and just set that aside. Plastic spacer. And again, we'll just set that aside. And next, we'll need to use a spanner wrench to remove that tub nut. Remove the nut, and we'll set those aside. Now, our next step will be to remove the inner tub. And to do so, we first need to take that tub cover off. So around the perimeter, you'll see these little clips. You simply need to Lift those away from the outer tub. You may need to push down slightly on the top to release those. 
and just do that all the way around the tub until it's completely released. Lift that out of the way. Now next, we'll just rock that inner basket till we break it free on that tub block. And then lift that whole tub out and just use caution around the inlet fill portion here so that we don't damage that. And next, we'll lift that drive block off of the agitator shaft. If it doesn't come off easily, I'm going to take a flat blade screwdriver and go into that gap and just spread it apart a little bit. So we'll discard the old one. Now when installing the new drive block, we want to make sure that we line up those notches on the drive block with the little tabs on the drive tube coming off the transmission. Now the new one may be fairly snug going on. So again, you may need to take a flat blade screwdriver and gently spread that gap apart enough to allow it to seat properly. Line up those notches. Make sure that that drive block sits right down so that those tabs are flush with the top of it. Now we're ready to set the inner basket back in place. Just rock it back and forth till we have it properly seated. And then we'll put that tapered nut on the top and then tighten that up. Now if that tub nut is corroded badly, you'll need to replace that as well. And as we're tightening that by hand, just rock the tub back and forth to make sure that it seats properly. And then we'll use the hammer to tighten it completely. Prefer to use a short handled hammer so that we don't damage the tub. Tighten it securely. Next, we'll place that spacer over the agitator shaft. Make sure that we set one leg of that spacer down into that gap on the drive block. And we'll position that retainer down on top of it. And now we're ready to put the tub cover back on. Now when reinstalling this tub cover, before we put it back on the tub, just check these three drain holes at the back here. Make sure that they're not plugged up and clear them if they are. There's also a cutout portion at the back here to help you line that up properly. So tuck it in underneath the water inlet. And just make sure that all these tabs are located outside of the outer tub. So just rotate them till they line up with the tabs on the tub. and then press it down into place, making sure all of them lock securely.
Now with the tub cover installed, we can then go ahead and put our agitator on. Now when installing the agitator, we do need to make sure that we have that bolt properly positioned. Now the best way to do that is to position the bolt on top of your socket and ratchet extension. Tilt the agitator upside down. And then fit it into the opening. While holding a little pressure on it to keep it in place, we'll sit the agitator over top of the agitator shaft, line up the splines, and then we can tighten that bolt. Again, you'll need to grasp the bottom portion of the agitator so you can tighten that bolt properly. Now there is a large rubber washer under there, so make sure that we don't drive the bolt right through that washer. Just make sure it's nice and snug. Well, next we'll need to reinstall that cover. Now you may want to just lubricate that O-ring, either with a little bit of dish detergent or water, something that will allow it to slide into place so that it doesn't roll out and not seal up properly. Sit it down into the opening. And we're just going to use that socket and extension. Gently tap that into place, making sure that it's flush all the way around. There's a little ridge around the inside of the barrel of that agitator. We'll use that as a guideline to make sure that we have it flat and snap properly in place. Once we have that secure, we can go ahead and put our cap on or our fabric softener dispenser. And now we're ready to put the cabinet back on. Now as we position that cabinet over the base frame, again we want to make sure that that bottom lip at the front of the panel goes in underneath the base frame. And then we're looking down through that lid opening, we can see where those two hooks are on the base. And line that up. Tilt the cabinet back. Also make sure that we pull that back panel forward enough that the cabinet will sit down over the fill valve. Then just check the rear corners to make sure that they dropped into place. Now just make sure that none of the harness or air dome tube are pinched. We'll take our mounting brackets and we'll engage the straight vertical end up into that slot on the back. Line it up with the two slots in the top and then press it down into place until it latches. Do the same on the opposite side with that straight vertical piece right into that slot on the back panel. Line it up, snap it into place. We'll reattach our mid switch harness. Make sure that locking tab engages. Now we'll rotate that console into position. We'll make sure that we hook the rear of that console, those two little hook shaped feet into the rear holes on the main top. And the spring clips will fit into the larger holes towards the front. Make sure the back panel is tucked up in underneath the top of the console. Line up those rear legs. and then press it down into place. Now we're ready to push the washer back into position. We're now ready to reconnect our inlet fill hoses, turn on the water supply to check for leaks, push the washer back into place, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.